Ah, January in the upper Midwest. It is snowing. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about engine bay prep and uh, what I did to affect the solution here. So for starters, um, I did not disconnect the power steering pump. I left it intact and kind of hefted it across the top of the timing cover. I've left it intact. That doesn't stop it from leaking. I don't understand why that is. Uh, but needless to say, I didn't have to break in and create an even larger spill. I did also remove the coolant, excuse me, the uh, washer, windshield washer fluid reservoir to make room for it so I can slide the engine back down the side of the uh, power steering pump by uh, just kind of pushing it over there. The battery uh, did get removed. So moving around here, um, the engine mount right here is very loose. Let's see if I can just, it's just floppy on. It's the two nuts that come up through the cradle are, uh, are very loose. So I can hopefully move that around and position the uh, oil pan, you know, to hit right when I drop it in. <laughs> Good luck with that. Um, I did change out the uh, catalytic converter pipe on this car for, I will just say, reasons. Uh, so I had to get that in before I think I dropped the, I could have put it in with the motor in. I just was uh, wanted to see if I could put it in through the top and no dice. Uh, so moving on. So didn't touch catalytic converter, not catalytic, hello. It didn't touch the torque converter. It's just stayed in its place. Uh, just like every other thing, it should move around or stay stationary as needed. Um, let's see here, down here is the AC compressor. That's the old, that's the trick where you don't break the lines, you just unbolt it and let it sit on the cradle. All of the wiring harness here is pushed out of the way as, you know, as best as possible. That of course is going to have to get uh, corralled when the motor starts dropping. Uh, of course the air intake was, was removed as well as, you know, everything across the front of the, you know, the dog bone mounts. I kept the Hood latch for whatever reason, just because it never got really in the way. And then the other trick, of course, is here's the fuel lines. Do the old flop the fuel rail trick out of the way. I've seen uh, this done on uh, YouTube a number of times. It's also in the, the Haynes manuals. They say just kind of move that out of the way. Uh, the other thing that's out of the way is the uh, uh, throttle cable, cruise control cable. And then uh, this little bad boy, I think that, that's what the EVAP solenoid or whatever that's called, but the little thing with the, you know, the tube that goes into the PCV valve. And then uh, this comes back and then I think that just goes to the, uh, somehow that waters over to the, uh, the canister. So uh, that is that. Uh, the uh, Coolant pipes here, of course they got disconnected. Uh, those I checked to make sure that they would reach to the new motor and the, the coolant pipes on them, the heater core pipes. So uh, next up is to put that motor in. The engine, the vehicle, getting closer. <sighs> One thing I found with a lot of home people, it's hilarious, is pretty much everyone goes to Harbor Freight for their <laughs> lifting needs. The old Pittsburgh brand is that ever present. Just want to mention something here. Uh, the front crank trigger that gets mounted on the timing cover, uh, that has to get transferred over from the 3400. Uh, the difference though is that on the 3500 that I pulled out of the, uh, the van, of course there's no, of uh, the, the Uplander van, there is no bracket to hold uh, this uh, sensor and on. It kind of holds it here uh, next to uh, the serpentine belt. So I'll just I'm gonna run over to the other remote real quick and just show you what I mean. Okay, for reference, uh, here is the crank pulley. This is the 3500 crank pulley. I just kind of threw it on the 3400 motor to get it out of the way. That bolt right there, that's where you hook on that bracket for that uh, sensor plug. So that particular feature is not present in the 3500. So gonna have to come up with something. So right there, that boss right there should have a threaded hole in it, just like on the other side, but it doesn't. And I've got tools at my disposal. I just don't feel like drilling into a cast iron block with the puny tools I have at the ready. So we're gonna come up with something different. Getting closer. Gonna have to have an assistant, the, uh, the sun unit, uh, come out and maybe push the hood up a little bit. Uh, I just took off the little 
clips that hold the pneumatic pistons on, so it should be easily removable, and then we get into the fun part. Hey Team YouTube, got the hood up but not uh, disconnected. My faithful assistant Beaker is holding the hood. And uh, yeah, good one. Uh, back here, the uh, valve cover is on the gasket, but I don't think I've bent up any metal. Here, this uh, the front boss for the uh, transmit, you know, for the transmission. It uh, cleared the core support here, and we're about a quarter of an inch away from the radiator, so things are looking okay. I would say it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if you uh, to uh, for absolute certainty to remove the radiator. Uh, however, uh, we're going to try to do it uh, without it because I think there's going to be just enough room. All right, Team YouTube. So transmission uh, bolts are back in, bell housing bolts. So starting here, and then two, three, four, four, five, and the sixth one's not back in yet, otherwise known as the uh, witch with a capital B bolt. Uh, back there managed to kind of shake and groove the motor back in place what I did though was there was a plan all along to go from hoist and Set it down on a jack with a wood block on it and then kind of move it into place from there. So the the uh, Hoist uh, is now out of the picture of course next so I left the motor mount the engine mount in nice and loose both from the uh, nuts that go up through the bottom of the cradle, 15 millimeter nuts, and also up at the top, of course, no fasteners. So had to wiggle the motor a fair amount to get it back in, but there's one, and then there's a second one here that faces skyward, and then the third one back here. Now this one here is a different thread, and so you gotta gotta keep them uh, separate, but the, the, the head on is still a 15 millimeter for a 15 millimeter socket. Looking back here, you can see where there's a differential bolt that'll go right there, and that is lined up just about perfect. And then there's another one, I know where it is, but it's kind of buried behind the harness right here. But this is looking very promising as far as getting that, getting those bolts in and then coming in. I don't know how I'm going to tighten the differential bolts on the motor, uh, but we'll figure something out. Okay, Team YouTube, here we are in the cold, hard ground in the winter. Uh, got a socket here on the lower differential uh, bolt. Uh, then as far as the bolt that goes on the motor, uh, there's one here on the oil pan. The other two are straight up this uh, the, 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 the bracket. Uh, those are going to be fun to get to. I think maybe it'll just come over the top of the motor. But this is... You know, awkward. I guess if you had a lift, this would be cake. Uh, but I'm about, you know, between a piece of cardboard and the ground and looking up. So, good luck. So that last bell housing bolt I want to put in and tighten. And uh, the way I do it, essentially, is that uh, I basically just belly flop onto... Here I got some foam pads. I just kind of, like I said, belly flop and throw myself in there, and you can get that. It, uh, I got the wrench. I got it finger tight already, so it's time for a second belly flop and get in there and get it. I'm not gonna tell you how old I am. I'm not gonna tell you how good a shape I am, but suffice it to say that if I can do it, there's got to be 20 somethings that can do it too. Hey, Team YouTube. So I tightened up the bell housing bolts before. I tighten up the differential bolts. I just want to make sure that you know everything is good. So obviously this is the one oil pan that's trivial to get to. Uh, there are the two bolts up there. If you can reach your hand, your arm around the uh, A arm, you can snake up a ratcheting wrench up there, a speed wrench up there. The 15 millimeter head, uh, it's doable. Hey team, you too. So. Uh, got all of the structural stuff done, motor mount, bell housing, engine in, differential bracket all tightened up. So the motor is in. Uh, now the real work begins in terms of doing the actual 
mechanics of the swap, all of the other things. I think I'm going to put all that on a separate video. Love for you to stick around. Have a great day, YouTube.